experience i hope you might be fine so without wasting time today we are going through a new chapter of class 6 chapter number 10 which is named as ratio and proportions now bachche what do you mean by ratio and proportions you all know that in day to day life or in our daily life we compare the different type of quantities or we compare similar items in which way we take one example seema's height is 167 cm and reema's height is 162 cm so how can we compare both height so so we are two methods one is method of subtraction and the second one is method of method of division method of division so i am taking first example from the method of subtraction that how can we compare two similar items for example seema's height is 167 cm and reema's height is 162 cm so if i subtract both height 167 cm minus 162 cm that is equal to 5 cm it means reema's height is 5 cm shorter than the seema's height it means in this way we compare both seema's and reema's height that and we conclude that reema's is 5 cm shorter than the seema's height it means reema is 5 cm shorter than seema is it clear now we have another method through which we can compare the two similar items that is method of division and now we make the definition of ratio from the but method of division how what is ratio when we compare two similar items quantities by method of division if we compare two similar items with the help of method of division then it is known as ratio now we are going to clear the topic ratio smoothly with the help of method of division now the second method is method of division so we take one example seema's weight 50 kg and reema's weight 60 kg now we are comparing weight of both with the help of method of division how seema's weight as a numerator and reema's weight as a denominator that is equal to 60 by 50 cancel the zeros this zero cancel with this zero that is equal to 6 by 5 it means we can say that seema weight is 6 by 5 times of reema's weight ha huh? we can say that from this seema's weight is 6 by 5 times of reema's weight after that i told you that this ratio and we can say that this comparison with the help of method of division also called as this comparison is ratio now ratio is denoted denoted by the sign sign this one look i can write 6 raised to 
six ratio five. After that. We can also what is the way to reach this? What is the way of reading this? We reach it as is two. How can we read it? Is two. We can say that six by five. We can read it as six is six is two five. Is it clear? This symbol is of ratio, and it is the way to read it. Six is two. Now, other definitions of ratio is we can also say in other words that. Ratio is similar to the fraction. I write here. Ratio is similar to the fraction where numerator and denominator separated by a symbol colon. Is it clear? Ratio is similar to fraction where numerator and denominator are separated by a colon. For example, six by five. We can write it as six colon. Five. Read it as six is to five, or we can say that six ratio five. And here another thing is that the first quantity is antecedent, and the second quantity is consequent. Now, students, we are taking some examples of related to the ratio. First one is expressed in the simplest form. Now, I am telling you. What is simplest form? That numerator and denominator cannot divide further to each other. For example, question number first is given as twelve by thirty-six, but numerator and denominator can divide divide twelve is a thirty-six. It means twelve is a twelve. Twelve is a thirty-six. It means both numerator and denominator are lies in same table. So this is one ratio of three. You can say that one by three, one ratio of three, one is to three. Is it clear now? Second example is now look one thing now one and three. Numerator and denominator cannot divide each other further. Now, proceed to the second example. Eighty-one by twenty-seven. Now we are seeing that in table of three, three divide the both numerator and denominator can divide with the three. Three nine is a twenty-seven, and if we divide it one by three. That is equal to seven. After that, twenty-seven and nine, both again they are divided by three. Three nine is a twenty-seven. Three three is a nine. After that, again same process. Three one is a three. Three three is a nine. That is equal to three by one. Or I say that three ratio one. Is it clear? Now proceed to our second example. Find the average of the following. You all know that how we can find average. Look, for finding the average of these numbers, first of all we have to add these quantities: seven plus eight plus sixteen plus twenty-one. Seven eight, seven plus eight, fifteen. Fifteen plus six, seven plus eight, fifteen. Plus sixteen plus twenty-one. Fifteen plus sixteen. Thirty-one plus twenty-one. Thirty-one plus twenty-one. That is equal to fifty-two. So after adding this one, the sum is fifty-two. How can you find the average sum of all quantities 
डिवाइडेड बाय नंबर ऑफ क्वांटिटीज सो व्हाट इज द सम ऑफ द क्वांटिटीज दैट इज इक्वल टू 52 एंड व्हाट इज द नंबर ऑफ क्वांटिटीज काउंट इज 1 2 3 4 That is equal to four. What is the sum of the quantities? Fifty-two and number of quantities one, two, three, four. That is equal to four. But we are looking that we are finding that both numerator and denominator these can divide with one quantity. Thirteen four is a Fifty-two. That is equal to thirteen by one, or we can say that thirteen ratio one, or you can say that thirteen ratio one. After that, one more example is you have to find the average. 13 plus 7 plus 11 plus 15 plus 90, 7 3, 10 plus 11 plus 15 plus 90. That is equal to 21 plus 15 plus 90. That is equal to 5 36 plus 90. That is equal to Fifteen five is it clear? Now how can we find average? Apply this formula. What is the sum? That is equal to fifty five. And number of quantities one two three four five. That is equal to five. Now both numerator and denominator divide each other. Eleven ratio one. This is the required. They show, or we can say that average of these number. If we talk about the ratio, so you have to tell eleven ratio one. If you talk about the average, average of this is eleven, and average of first question is thirty. Is it clear? Now proceed towards the next topic. Next example is right equivalent fraction. See here, right equivalent fraction of two by three. Now, to right equivalent fraction, first of all, you have to know about what are equivalent fractions. So, equivalent fractions basically equivalent fractions are that fractions which lie on same point or number line. Look here, for example, I am saying that this point is. Two by three. If we write it as four by six, that is equal to again two by three. It means this point is also known as four by six. It means four by six is equal to two by three. How you can say that? Because after write it in simplest form. It becomes equals to two by three. Is it clear what is equivalent fraction? Now we have to write equivalent fractions for writing equivalent fractions of these two by three. Simple way. Here we have we have a simple way that is multiply and divide both numerator and denominator with one number. For example, I multiply this fraction with two and also. Denominator multiplied with two. One thing is that if I multiply and divide the denominator with two, then there is no effect. How? Cancel. That is equal to one. And one is the identity element. It means after multiplying with one, there is no effect on given number or fraction. So after multiplying. And dividing by two, two to the four, three to the six. It means four by six 
equal to two by three. Another one, two by three, multiply and divide by three. Two three is a six. Three three is a nine. Six by nine. Four by six. These all are equal in fractions. How? This is also equal to two by three. This is also equal to two by three. After writing in the simplest form, is it clear? Now, proceed to ask the fourth one question. We have to find the value of x. Is given it is. If we have two fractions which are equal, then we can multiply both the cross multiply both the fractions. Example: cross multiply this sixty multiply this. And seventy-five multiplied four. And you all know that sixty is in multiply. And if we take this sixty towards other side of the is equal to sign, then it goes in the division. Now you can divide it fifteen for the sixty. Fifteen by seventy-five. After that, cancel four with the four, and hence the value of x is equal to five. Is it clear to all of you? I hope you are definitely clearing these topics related to the ratio. And today's last question is that divide three hours to the fifteen minutes. One important thing is that if you want to divide both the quantities. First of all, you have to make numerator and denominator of the similar, because in the starting I tell you that ratio is the is that we compare the quantities which are similar. So it is hour and it is minute. They are not similar. So we have to convert hours in minutes. So. How you can convert three hours into minutes? Three hours into minutes, you have to multiply it with sixty. Why? Because we know that one hour contains sixty minutes. So I multiply it. This changes to now minutes. This means this is a eighty. One eighty minutes. Is it clear? Now I write it as one eighty minutes divided by fifteen minutes. Now we can divide it because it is also minute. It is also minute. It means both are the similar quantities. Now divide it three five zero. Fifteen, three six is eighteen. Zero as it is. Now twelve is a sixty. It means after dividing, we have twelve, or we can write it as twelve by one or twelve by zero. Is it clear? Now, students, rest of the. Questions related to the recap exercise of ratio and proportions. You will try. If you face any problem or any query, then you can ask me in the WhatsApp groups, and I will also provide you questions for practice in the PDF form. So till then, be safe. Namaste.